So hello YouTube, this is Thomas Judge back once again with yet another video of a custom printing of a Marvel Omnibus. Um, in this case it's a custom printing of a Hulk run, particularly a Peter David Hulk run, and particularly a Peter David Hulk run set during the Marvel Heroes Reborn era. So the finished article looks a bit like this. Um, I love that cover image, absolutely love, love, love it. It's uh, drawn by Adam Kuba and it's one of the covers of one of the issues that goes in this volume. And there's just a couple of other images of it showing you a bit of the spine and the back as well. And you see on the back there, um, it also lists the issues that are in there. Now, I'm going to do quite a detailed breakdown of the bind order here, because I think it's quite important to understand why I've bound this and why I picked the issues I have. First things first, the issues I picked here are specifically from the era that dovetails in with Marvel Heroes Reborn. So there's a little bit of overlap with Onslaught, thorough overlap of the Heroes Reborn era, and then it carries on after that until the end of the Peter David run. So I'll talk you through it and then I'll show you how it fits in with my other custom omnibuses specifically of Heroes Reborn. So the first issue I've included in this is issue 443, which is this one. Um, although this issue 443 of The Incredible Hulk, the prior three or four issues before this of the Incredible Hulk comic didn't actually have the Hulk in them. They were kind of random weird side stories involving the, the Molecule Man or... She-Hulk or Doc Samson and that sort of stuff. So the series is going through a bit of a weird transition at this point. This issue marks the return of the Incredible Hulk. He actually comes back from the future imperfect timeline, if you're familiar with that story. So I included that issue. I then didn't include the following issue, which was 444, because I had that already in my Onslaught Omnibus. Um, and it's not a particularly great issue, to be honest. The next issue, chronologically speaking, is this one, which is actually an Uncanny X-Men issue, um, which I think makes sense if you were just reading through the Hulk run, the Hulk is in this, etc, etc. But I didn't want to include it, and it is included in my Onslaught Omnibus. Following that, you've then got Incredible Hulk 445, which again I didn't include for the same reasons. And then you have the Marvel Onslaught Universe sort of... Um, big finale issue which the Hulk is in it sort of splits up shows the Hulk splitting up from the Bruce Banner personality as well again I didn't include any of those after the first issue 443 because they're all included in my Onslaught Omnibus so then getting back into the issues I did include I jumped from 443 to 446 which is this post Onslaught post banner I know that might seem a bit weird it's a matter of personal taste it's just how I wanted to collect it after that I've got issues 447 448 and then onto Annual 97. Now, I include Annual 97 here because chronologically that's kind of where it fits in. Although I haven't actually collected all of Annual 97. The reason for that is split between two stories. One of which is a kind of a weird story involving the Hulk and Gladiator. And Hulk thinks he's got a son and then turns out he hasn't got a son. It's, it's a bit weird. Um, the latter half of it is a totally separate standalone story, which you can see on the cover here. Which involves Franklin Richards, Leech and Artie. Um, and as a result, it fits in really well with the whole Heroes Reborn thing, because Franklin Richards has got a very pivotal influence on Heroes Reborn. So I kept that half of the annual in, but only that half of it. Again, it's a personal choice, I just didn't like the first story in it. After that, it then jumps back into The Incredible Hulk, and you've got issue 449, Introducing the Thunderbolts. Um, this is one that a lot of people get very excited by, because they think, oh, this is a great first key issue. But there are so many issues of this available, that actually buying this from a speculation point of view isn't really a big deal. Um, after that, issue 450, a special double-sized issue with two separate stories in it. I kept them both, because they're both pretty good. Um, and then issues 451, 452, 453, which is a great one. And then 454, you'll remember that cover from the um, cover I eventually used for the Omnibus, so that's an image I used for the dust jacket. After issue 454, there's actually, actually what they call a flashback issue, which they were doing a lot during this era. So this Incredible Hulk issue minus one, um, really hard to track down, to be honest. Um, and I hadn't read it until relatively recently, but when I did, I actually found it was great. It does break the fourth wall a bit. You've got some cameos by Stan Lee, rest in peace. Um, but the comic itself is really good and actually it's, it kind of fills in the blanks between what happens at the end of the previous issue with the cover I just showed you and this issue, which is issue 455, which is the Hulk, um, I wouldn't say versus the X-Men, but definitely featuring the X-Men. Then issues 456, which is one involving Apocalypse and starts a whole great new story arc, which I remember really enjoying the first time I read it. Issue 457, a great fight with a juggernaut. Issue 458, 459... 
And then we've got the Hulk and Submariner. The Hulk and Submariner is one that I didn't collect. The reason for that, it was just rubbish and it didn't fit in here at all. It seemed to be a standalone story. It wasn't really well written, wasn't really well drawn. So although it is part of the chronological arc, it's not part of the story arc. So jumping back into the one that I did collect, um, oh, here we are. Um, we've got Annual X-Men and the Incredible Hulk. I wasn't massively keen on this either. So I uh, didn't collect this. Again, the story doesn't make much sense. The art doesn't make much sense. It's not really very well written. So sorry, yeah, jumping back into the ones that I did collect, we're back into issues 460. So I went from 459, I skipped the Sub Submariner one, I skipped the X-Man one, and then I jumped into issue 460, which is actually ties in perfectly to Heroes Reborn because that's the issue where the heroes return and the original Hulk um, and Banner get reunited. Subsequent to that, you've got issues uh, 461, 462, 463, 464... 465, the very, very depressing 466, and the X finale of Peter Davies run 467. Let's take a moment just to think about those issues. Those seven issues really represent an excellent run of Peter David stories, and that's the end of what I've collected in the Omnibus. And kind of that last issue and that last image really kind of underlines why I've collected this Omnibus, because Peter David really hit gold with the writing here. Just the degree of pathos and the degree of sort of sullen antisocial antipathy uh, exemplified by the hulk and just the way that story comes together the characterization of rick jones his um interaction between bruce banner and between general ross the whole thing is just done so well and such an understated way i really enjoyed the whole run up to and including this issue peter david left at this point and i'm not an expert so i don't know why but i gather he left under a bit of a cloud um, the series continued, however, with these issues. So just uh, sort of scroll through. Um, they're sort of random issues, random stories. Doesn't really make a great amount of sense. Um, it kind of tries to wrap up some loose ends and does it in kind of a messy way, to be honest. Um, and it's just the writing's not good, the artwork's not good. I really just wasn't keen on it, so I didn't collect it. It's not the Peter David run. And like I say, the issue that I just showed you, 467, is a perfect finale for that. Um and then that series ended with issue 474 and then relaunched later as something else and, you know, who cares. Anyway, so this is the actual um, omnibus itself. I'm just doing like a quick video here just to show you what it looks like. Um, again, that cover, as I said, which was drawn by Adam Kubert. He actually came on board for that particular issue, which was issue 454. So I've cleaned it up a bit to make the dust jacket image. It looks really nice. Uh, one of my favourite covers, actually. Um, for the spine, I went with the title of World Without Heroes, which I think I heard someone else refer to this era as, so I've kind of gone with it. And for the back, I've gone for a really kind of understated um, image there, just of the Hulk, just of his eyes, actually from the issue 4, 5, 6, 7. And uh, there's the list of the issues there. If you guys want to pause, I'll have a look there to see what I've included. So just having a flick through, don't worry, I've already stretched out the spine. Um, I just wanted to show you there, what I've done, I put um, end pages on the front which are white and on the back which are black to kind of match the dust jacket transitioning from white at one end and black to the other. Here just having a flick through, um, nothing massively exciting to say here about the flick through, um, so I'll just take a moment just to remind everyone who's watching, if this is the first time watching my channel or watching these videos, the reason that I do these custom prints um, is because they're different and in my mind very very much superior to custom binds and um, the custom print means you can have it printed at omnibus size which I'll be showing later on it also means that you can avoid all the adverts um, which I absolutely can't stand about custom binds I don't like having adverts because they really break the fourth wall and give you kind of a jarring reading experience as well as that as I've done in this particular set of issues it means that you can crop and adjust the images to clean up any kind of odd printing artifacts which you get on single issues from the 90s and also to make them full bleed, so edge to edge, because a lot of these comics will tend to have um, quite wide margins on the left and the right and the, and the top and the bottom and so on. And I was really after getting rid of that and um, trying to get them more and more full bleed. I don't necessarily do a perfect job, but then I'm not a professional digital illustrator, so um, kind of the best job I could. And it's come across really well. I mean, I'm very happy with the way that it turned out. Um, and it gives you this really nice, kind of clean, glossy, advert-free, omnibus-sized, high-resolution, 
comic. Um, really pretty much indistinguishable from anything officially made by Marvel or DC or anything like that. Um, and it means you can kind of pick the perfect bind order for what you want, which is why I picked the bind order that I did. Which I'm, I'm aware is eclectic, and I'm aware lots of people would pick something quite different, probably include things like the X-Man annual, or the Submariner, or the full annual 97 and so on. Um, but, you know, it's uh, it's my comic, so I decided to put in the ones that I thought were, were relevant. Um, I'm also aware that this is a series that's been collected in some epics like, to an extent. I think the first few issues even collected in epics, and then some of it was in the Onslaught Omnibus and so on. And hopefully they'll collect the rest in epic format, but it's all just a bit of a formatting mess, to be honest. Um, and from my point of view, it's that that's not really something I want on the shelf. I want this particular run with these particular issues, and doing a custom print lets you do that. So that was the flick through. I hope that was useful, guys. Um, and uh, again, there's just the cover. And I'm going to do a few shots just to give you an idea of where this fits in to the rest of my collection as well. So to, to give you an idea, um, what we have here is the omnibus just standing up. Uh, got another image here of it at a slightly different angle. Again, as you can tell, I, I love that cover. And this is it from the back. Now, that's an image I picked up from um, issue 467. I was sort of torn between that and a similar image from issue 450, where the Hulk actually sheds a tear. But this one was more high res and just preferable in the end. Um, I'm not showing off here, but here are my Avengers omnibuses. I've got them here for size and for comparison. So there's volume one, there's volume two of the out of print Hickman omnibuses. And here in the middle, is what it looks like with the Hulk right next to him, just lying down flat there. So it looks pretty good, pretty indistinguishable. So if I stand them up, um, you'll see there I've got my two Avengers and then Hulk between them. That's not how they're gonna look on the shelf in the end, I just wanted to have it there for scale. Um, where they're actually gonna be on the shelf in the end is to do with my Heroes Reborn omnibuses. So here you can see them both lying flat. That's volume one on the left and volume two on the right. And I have other videos on those, which you're more than welcome to have a look at. And here's the Hulk sitting in between them. And actually, when I put them on the shelf, they're going to look something like this. So here is Reborn 1, and then the Hulk, A World Without Heroes, and here is Reborn 2. Because actually, these, st these stories kind of happen at exactly the same time. Um, this Hulk run is the Hulk run whilst all the heroes are presumed to be dead during the Heroes Reborn era. Um, this is the back of them. Um, I've done this kind of deliberately. You'll see that what I did when I designed the Dust Jackets for the Heroes Reborns one is I went for a very pale, very muted, very uh, understated aesthetic, or very white and sort of Jay Lee style, uh, if you get the reference. And so with the Hulk one, I wanted to contrast it massively by having it very dark, very heavy, very, very black, um, specifically just so it looked like this. And I personally really like it. I mean, obviously, you know, tastes vary. Um, so here it is again, just standing up there with my Heroes Reborn omnibuses, um, and that's how I'm going to keep it on the shelf, if and when I eventually do a room tour, I guess. You guys will see um, where it fits in with everything else. So, uh, quite a long video, but thanks for watching, guys. Hope you really enjoyed that. Um, so that was my custom-printed Hulk omnibus with a custom-designed dust jacket. I hope it all made sense. Um, as always, thanks for watching. Please like, comment, subscribe. Um, and as always, to support the channel and support more videos and, and things like that, please head over to my website or to head over to Amazon.com and pick up an episode of my episodic novel, novel No Gods or Kings, which is an episodic novel um, about superheroes and comic books. Um, thanks very much for the support, guys, and until next time, stay classy. <laughs>